Today in the workshop, we're working with the ESP32 DAC. You'll learn how the DAC works and how to use it to produce DC voltages and waveforms. We'll also create some oscilloscope art and an edible musical instrument. We're making waves today, so welcome to the workshop. Well, hello and welcome to the workshop, and today we're going to be working with our friend the ESP32. Now, this is becoming probably one of the most popular microcontrollers here in the DroneBot workshop, and for good reason. It's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, and it opens us up to a number of remote control and IoT projects. However, the ESP32 is also a very powerful microcontroller with a number of other features, and it's one of those overlooked features that I'm going to be dealing with today, the digital to analog converters or DACs. Now pretty well every microcontroller that we've used here has analog to digital converters and the ESP32 has a number of them as well. These allow you to input an analog voltage and get a digital representation of its level. Well a DAC does the opposite thing. It allows you to take a digital number and convert it into an analog voltage and the ESP32 has two 8-bit DACs. Now these aren't audio quality quality DAC, so you're not going to be able to put high fidelity audio into that. For that, you would probably use I2S, and we've talked about that earlier. But you can use the DACs to output output voltages, you can use it to create waveforms, and as you'll see, you can even use it to make some music. And so what we're going to do is take a look at how the ESP32 DACs work, and then we're going to see how we can use them in all of their different modes. A digital to analog converter is a device that has a digital input and an analog output. The analog output is in proportion to the value of the digital input. Digital to analog converters or DACs are used in audio and video applications, telecommunications, for instrumentation, for pulse width modulation and complex waveform generation, and as digital potentiometers. There are many methods that can be used to convert a digital input to an analog output, including such items such as PWM. Two very common methods are weighted resistor DACs and R2R ladder DACs, and these are illustrated here. Note that the switches in these DACs actually just represent the ones or zeros of its digital input. The number of bits that a DAC has determines its precision or resolution. As an example, an 8-bit DAC would provide 256 discrete output voltages. The ESP32 has two 8-bit DACs. For the majority of ESP32 boards, you'll find that the two DACs are located on GPIO pin 25 and GPIO pin 26. However, if you have an ESP32-S2, you'll find that channel 1 of the DAC is on GPIO pin 17, and channel 2 is on GPIO pin 18. The ESP32 DAC supports three different methods of analog output. The direct voltage output method, the cosine wave generator output, and continuous output by direct memory access, or DMA. Direct voltage output is the simplest form of output on the DAC. It simply converts the 8-bit value that you present to the DAC to an analog voltage every time that the DAC is called. This voltage will remain on the output channel until the next call. Using the Arduino IDE, we can use the DAC write and DAC disable functions in order to control the DAC in direct voltage output mode. The ESP32 DAC has an internal cosine wave generator there is only one of them, and its output can be used by either channel. The user can control the frequency, amplitude, and phase of the wave. The clock source for the cosine wave generator is the ESP32's real-time clock. Another method of outputting to the DAC is to use the DMA or direct memory access buffer. There are three methods of use. Normal writing, or synchronous writing, takes the output of the buffer and sends it to the DAC and continues to do that. With cyclical writing, the data in the buffer is looped and repeated. This is often used for generating waveforms. 
Asynchronous writing requires an external callback signal so you can synchronize the output of the DMA and the DAC. The output of the ESP32 DAC is referenced to the AREF or analog reference pin. This is the same pin used to reference the analog to digital converters in the ESP32. Now many ESP32 boards don't expose the AREF pin. Without using AREF, the default reference voltage is a 3.3 volt power supply in the ESP32. Now the output of the ESP32 DAC is fairly linear as this chart will show. However, the chart also shows the output does not reach zero when the input is zero, and it does not achieve the A ref voltage when the input is 255. This is a known limitation of the digital to analog converters in the ESP32. But despite those limitations, the DAC in the ESP32 can open up a number of different applications. And so let's start working with the ESP32 DAC. So now that we know a little bit more about the ESP32 DAC, it's time to start working with it. So what we're going to do now is a number of different experiments with the DAC just to get a handle on how to use it. I'm going to show you how to make output voltages at specific levels. After that, we'll look at a number of different ways to make waveforms, including using an external library. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need just an ESP32 and a little bit of test equipment. So let's go and take a look at those requirements. Requirements. Now for all of our experiments we will of course require an ESP32 module and you could pretty well use any ESP32 module that you happen to have. On that module we're going to be interested in three pins. Channel 1 of the DAC which is on GPIO pin 25, channel 2 of the DAC which is on GPIO pin 26, and we'll also need one of the many ground connections on the ESP32 module. Now for our experiments today, we'll also require some test equipment. Specifically, we're going to require a voltmeter or multimeter. It would be very handy if you had an oscilloscope that had at least two channels. Now if you don't have an oscilloscope, you can do some of the experiments using an audio amplifier module instead. Now for our first experiment, we're going to just be using our multimeter or voltmeter, and the connection is very simple. We'll connect the negative side of our voltmeter to the ground connection on the ESP32. The positive side of the voltmeter will be connected to the channel 1 output on GPIO pin 25. Keep in mind we're going to be measuring voltages between 0 and 3.3 volts, so set your multimeter or voltmeter accordingly. And now let's take a look at some code that we can use to run our first experiment. We'll begin our work with the ESP32 DAC by doing a very simple sketch that will just output various voltages to one of the DAC pins. Now we start off our sketch by defining those DAC pins, so we do that over here, and we're actually only going to be using one of them in this sketch. In this setup, we're going to set up our serial monitor, and then we go into the loop. And basically, we're just using one function over and over again, the DAC write function. And if you look at the DAC write function, you'll see it has two parameters. It it has the parameter for the pin and a parameter for the value. So the pin we are giving as DAC channel 1, which is pin 25, and we're giving it a value, and in this case we're giving it a value of 0. Then we'll print to the serial monitor what that value is, and we'll hold it there for about 3 seconds. And we just continue to do that and change the values. And so these are the values that we're passing to the DAC pin, and they range from 0 to 255. So I'm doing it in increments of 64. You can add extra ones in here if you wish. So we go 64, 128, 192, and then a final one at 255. So in theory, the one at zero should produce no output, should produce zero volts, whereas the one at 255 should produce our reference voltage, and since I'm not using an external reference, that should be the 3.3 volts. But we'll see what it actually does when we run it and look at it on a multimeter. And so here's our DAC experiment running right now, and as you can see with a DAC value of zero, we actually didn't get zero volts. And so watch the multimeter as you watch the serial monitor, and you can see it climbing. Now we're at 255, and we also didn't get 3.3 volts. We got 3.1 something. And here, yes, at zero, you might have seen 0.095 volts. So a zero isn't quite down at zero volts, and 255 isn't quite up at 3.2 volts. There it is, 3.173.
And this is a known issue with the ESP32 DAC, and so you'll need to consider that if you're trying to give precise output voltages. But otherwise, as you can see, it's pretty consistent with the voltages that it gives out, and it does indeed correspond to the numbers that we are feeding into the DAC for a DAC value. For the waveform experiment, we are going to require an ESP32, and ideally we'll need an oscilloscope. If you don't have an oscilloscope, or if you want to augment the experiment, you could also use an audio amplifier, because all of the waveforms we're going to be generating are within audio frequencies. If you're using the oscilloscope, you can connect the ground of the oscilloscope probe to a ground on the ESP32. Connect the input of the oscilloscope probe the ESP32 pin GPIO25. If you're using the audio amplifier, you can connect its input to GPIO pin 25 and its ground to the ESP32 ground. If you are using the audio amplifier, you want to make sure you have a way of turning down the volume or turning it off very quickly because these tones could get rather monotonous. Now let's go and take a look at some code we can use to generate waveforms using the ESP32 DAC. Now for our next experiment, we're going to generate a very simple waveform, and what we're going to generate is a sine wave. Now the method I'm going to show you really isn't the best method of doing this because you really have no control over the frequency of the sine wave, but it does illustrate one way of doing it. And we're simply going to be outputting to the DAC as we did before, but we're going to constantly change the voltage levels throughout all of the positions in the sine wave. So we're going to start off again by defining the DAC pins and one once again, I'm really only using one of them. There's nothing in the setup, so everything is down here in the loop, and basically it's all in this for loop over here. We define an integer called DEG, which means degree, and it can go from 0 to 360, and we're going to increment it in steps of 1. And then for each one of these steps, we're going to do a DAC write. So we're going to write to our DAC channel, and we're going to take the integer value of this formula over here, which calculates our position on the sine wave. And and we'll just continue to write that to the output, and we'll look at that output on our oscilloscope and even listen to it with our audio amplifier. Now here's how I've hooked up my ESP32 and a solderless breadboard to an amplifier and a speaker. This is actually a stereo amplifier module, but I'm using just one channel of it. And I currently have the speaker disconnected because it is creating a tone and it can get a little bit annoying. So if we take a look at the scope, we can see that we definitely have a sine wave. And my scope is telling me that I've got a frequency of 86.2 hertz, so it's a fairly low frequency sine wave. So I'll hook up the speaker so we can take a listen to that and of course at 86 hertz this little half inch speaker that I've got over here is having some difficulty playing it it would have sounded a lot better with a subwoofer or something but um, basically it is working it is giving us a sine wave and uh, we've got what we wanted as an output but of course we didn't have much control over the frequency or anything now I'm going to show you another way that we can create a waveform with our DAC, and we're going to make a sine wave this time, but you could actually make just about any type of waveform you want, including very complex ones. And this method involves using a table. Now we're going to start by defining the DAC pins as we always did, and I'm just using the first one. And then we're going to define the number of samples that we're going to use, and I'm using 112 samples. And a sample is a specific point in the waveform. And we'll also define an integer to count those samples, and I'm defining this one called I. Now here's an array with all of the samples in it, so there are 112 entries in this array, and each one of these entries, which is in hexadecimal, is a value for a point on the waveform. So we're dividing our waveform into 112 different points. And you could change the number over here to more or less different points as you want. And of course, you could change these values to make a complicated waveform. Now, we're not really, again, controlling frequency over here. It's just controlling the waveform. Nothing in the setup and in the loop. We are simply going to use our DAC write command to our DAC channel. And we're going to take a value from that table. So we're going to take a value 
value from that array and write it out to the DAC. Then we're going to increment the counter and go back through the loop and do it again. Now, if the counter ends up being the number of samples, which in our case is 112, then we're going to reset it to zero. And so it's a very simple method of generating a complex waveform. Let's go and take a look at it. And so here's the demonstration using the table method of creating a waveform. And once again, we've created a sine wave. This time our frequency is a bit higher. It's hovering around 470, 480 hertz. It's varying slightly. Uh, we can listen to it if we want to. We'll put the amplifier on. And it's a bit more pleasant to tone than the last one. Uh, kind of like the sound you might hear from your smoke detector. So I should probably turn it off before people start evacuating but it does work and of course using the table method we could create pretty well any shape of waveform that we want but we still don't have a lot of control over the frequency we could control the frequency by reducing or increasing the number of elements in the table but as we're going to see there are better ways of doing this now, so far we've been able to create waveforms with our DAC using the direct voltage method. Essentially, we are just continually writing to the DAC and giving it a voltage value, and it's changing that and creating a waveform. But as we've seen, it's a bit restrictive. We can't really have much control over the frequency of the waveform using the method we had. And as for frequency, we can only do fairly low frequency waves. Now, as you'll recall from the introduction, there are actually three methods that the ESP32 can output on its DAC, the direct voltage that we've already used, the continuous output by DMA, and the cosine wave generator. And to use the latter two, it is a lot easier to use a library than to write the code directly. Now, there are a few libraries that are available for the ESP32 DAC, including one that is already built into the ESP32 but that you get when you download all the board files. There was another one that was very popular for audio work. It was by someone called Extonical, who also has a YouTube channel here. However, it was a bit of a strange library in the sense that it wasn't on GitHub, that it wasn't in the Arduino Library Manager, and the only way you could get it was to download it from the Extonical website. Unfortunately, the latest version of the library is broken. It won't compile correctly, and although there are fixes up on the internet for it, the original creator has abandoned this, and I I don't really think it's a good path going forward. So I'm going to use a different library and it's the DAC ESP32 library and you can download it right in your library manager. Just type in DAC ESP32 and install it. So once you've installed it, we can start to use it and it allows you to use among other things, a cosine wave generator and it makes it very simple to do so. So first of all, we'll include the library and then we create a DAC object and notice that we don't need to define a pin this time because it already has these enumerators that are predefined with the DAC pin. So I'm just going to create an object and I'm going to call it DAC1. I could call it anything I want, but DAC1 is channel 1 on uh, GPIO number 25. Now in the setup, we're going to output a cosine wave with a frequency of 1 kilohertz. And as you can see, it's very simple. We'll just do an output CW, cosine wave, and then the parameter, which is the frequency of the cosine wave. We're going to hold that for five seconds, and then we're going to go into our loop. And in our loop, we're just going to continue to output the waveform, but we're going to change the amplitude every second. And so for we're going to use a for loop delay by one second and then go into the loop and check the value. If the value is zero, we're going to output the full amplitude, which is scale one. If it's one, we'll do scale two, which is lower amplitude. There are four different amplitudes over here. So this will change the level of the waveform continuously. So what we should observe is that we will see, or if using the audio amplifier here, a one kilohertz tone at full amplitude for five seconds, and then we'll start to reduce the level of that tone and then we'll repeat that and go up to the top and reduce the level again. So let's output this to our board and take a look and a listen to it. Now here's our one kilohertz tone demonstration using the ESP DAC library and as you can see it is changing in amplitude. It's already been through the first part of the sequence where it just gives a full amplitude signal 
for about five seconds and uh, you can see on the scope it's basically doing exactly what you would expect it to do and it creates a fairly nice sine wave now I'll connect the speaker up to our little amplifier setup and you can hear that the tone varies in amplitude and we'll disconnect this annoying sound and consider that to be a good demonstration. So now that we've seen how to create voltages and waveforms with our ESP32 DAC, let's have a bit of fun with it. What we're going to do next is create some oscilloscope art. Now obviously for this next experiment you're going to need to use an oscilloscope and so you'll need to have a scope that has at least two input channels. We're also going to need to set up our scope in what's called XY mode where one channel modulates the X axis and the other channel modulates the Y axis. So let me show you how I set Set my scope up, we'll show you the very simple hookup for this, and then I'll show you some code that you can use to produce a very simple piece of oscilloscope art. Now in order to run the oscilloscope art, we're going to need to put the scope in an XY mode. What this means is that one channel is going to modulate the X axis of the scope, and the other channel is going to modulate the Y axis of the scope. And now of course if you have a different oscilloscope than I do, the method of doing this will be different, but pretty well every oscilloscope can do it. Now if you do have the Regal DS1054 like I do, you can do it as follows. You hit this menu button, and then where it says time base, you press the menu over here, and you've got a different three different selections. Uh, YT, which means Y is this the uh, time signal, XY, which is the mode we want, and roll mode. So you move that down and press this in to select it. And now we are in XY mode on our oscilloscope, and we can do our oscilloscope art. For our oscilloscope art experiment, we will of course need an ESP32 module, and naturally we're going to need an oscilloscope, and the scope needs to have at least two channels. Connect the probe to channel A of the scope, and another probe to channel B. On the probe for channel A, connect the ground to the ESP32 ground, and connect the scope input to GPIO pin 25 on the ESP32. Now on scope probe number 2, you can connect its ground to the ESP32 ground. However, since you've already grounded the other probe, this connection really isn't necessary. The input connection of the B probe will be connected to GPIO 26. And this completes the connections. Now let's go and make some art with our ESP32. So here's our oscilloscope art demonstration, and this demonstration code actually was not mine. It originated by a fellow named Bit Looney, and you can go to his GitHub repository. He also has a YouTube channel, and on his YouTube channel, he's shown you a number of different ways of not only doing scope art, but actually connecting a video camera and displaying it on the scope. So uh, you might want to check that out. At any rate, uh, it uses the built-in DAC library or driver that came with the ESP32 as well as the math library and so we're going to include those at the beginning and also define a float that's used as an increment within the program. Now in the setup we go in and we use a DAC output enable and this is a function again internally included with the ESP32 and we're going to enable both of the DAC channels because we're going to be using both outputs for this experiment. Now, now what we are going to do to generate our waveform is we're going to create a sine wave on one output and a cosine wave on the other one. So they'll be offset in phase from each other and we're going to use the scope as I showed you earlier in an XY mode. And so one channel is going to modulate the X axis and the other one is going to modulate the Y axis. We're also going to define a variable that we increment by and it's a very slow short increment here of 0.01. And then we're we're going to step through everything. We're going to output a sine wave on channel 1 and a cosine wave on channel 2. And we're going to step through an entire circle and do that. And after we step through the entire circle, we are going to send each output high very briefly for about 10 milliseconds. And the reason we're going to do that is to provide a trigger for the oscilloscope. So we're going to do this on both of the channels. It also in illustrates how you can just do an output 
output voltage directly to the DAC using this method. And so let's load this up and take a look at our art on the oscilloscope. And so here we are, our oscilloscope art, and as we can see we've got an ellipse that's moving around and of course what's happening is that we have the scope in XY mode and we are modulating the X channel with a sine wave and the Y channel with a cosine wave and this is the result over here. And you can even change the shape of the ellipse by changing the sensitivity on one channel versus the other channel. And, of course, it's a pretty neat little display, so if you're creating some sort of a 50s sci-fi movie type thing and you need something in the background of the Mad Scientist Library, you might want to give this one a try. Now when you hear somebody tell you that they're going to be making music with an Apple, you probably assume that they're using a Mac or an iPad and some software such as Logic Pro or GarageBand. But we could use an ESP32 to make music with an Apple, and this is a rather scrawny Granny Smith Apple. I actually had some very nice Macintosh Apples ready to do this experiment with, but because of a communications error, they became applesauce. So I'm going to be using these and a couple of oranges with my ESP32. ESP32, the ESP32 DAC, and another feature of the ESP32, which is its touch switch capability. So let's go and take a look at how we hook up our fruit basket to an ESP32 and make music out of it. Now here's the hookup for our musical fruit, and it's actually pretty simple. We're going to start, of course, with an ESP32 module, and you could pretty well use any ESP32 device. Now I'm also using a potentiometer as a volume control for the output. Now if the amplifier that you're using already has a volume control, you won't need to use this component, but otherwise I'd use a higher value, something in the 50 to 100k region, and if you happen to have an audio taper one, that would work great. But I I used a linear taper pot and it seemed to work just fine. And you will of course need an audio amplifier. This can be a separate unit or it could just be a little module like I'm using on the breadboard. And we will of course need our touch switches. Now I'm using oranges and apples but you can pretty well use anything conductive that you could touch. A piece of aluminum foil would work great as well. Now we're going to begin by connecting GPIO pin 25, which is DAC channel number 1, to one side of the potentiometer. The other side of the pot we're going to be connecting to the ESP32 ground. Then we'll take the wiper of the pot and connect it to the amplifier's input. Again, if you're not using the potentiometer, you can disconnect GPIO pin 25 directly to the amplifier input. In either case, we'll also connect the ground of the amplifier to the ground of the ESP32. Now we'll start wiring our sensors. Sensor number 1 will go to GPIO pin 32. Sensor 2 to GPIO pin 33. Sensor 3 to GPIO 27. Sensor 4 will go to GP14. Sensor 5 will go to 12. Sensor 6 to 13. Sensor 7 to 15, and sensor 8 will go to GPIO pin 4. And this completes the wiring of our musical fruit. Now let's take a look at the code that we can use to start making music. Now here's the sketch that we're going to be using for our musical fruit, and it's actually a pretty simple sketch. Once again, I've based it around the DAC ESP32 library, so we're going to start by including that library and creating an object that represents the DAC on channel 1, which is on GPIO pin 25. Now we're going to define the touch pins that I use, and I should note that the definitions I use, touch 1, touch 2, etc., are my own definitions. The ESP32 does have official designations for each one of those pins and they're similar designations but they don't match these ones and so don't get the two confused. Now I've used eight of the touch switches but there are ten and you could of course use the other two you'll just have to expand the code accordingly. Now I've got some variables that hold the values that are going to come back from these touch pins. The way the touch switches work is that they'll deliver back a value from 0 to 255 and a high value means they're not being touched and a low value 
value means that they are being touched. Now for that, we define a threshold for each one of the pins, and that's the threshold between being touched and not being touched. And this can change depending on the touch surface. So I've got eight different variables for that, one for each one of the switches. And you can start off with a value of about 150 or 200. I found that worked with most of them, but you might need to alter these. And we're gonna print the values to the serial monitor so you can get an idea if you need to change them. Now these are the frequencies that we've defined here for our musical notes and I've included the link to a chart that will relate musical notes to frequency if you want to change these. Now in the setup as I said we're going to use the serial monitor for diagnostic purposes so we'll set that up and we're going to start off by disabling our DAC. Now we'll go into the loop and we're going to check the status of each of the touch switches which is just done with the touch read function. It's a very simple function. The only parameter is the pin that you want and it will give back a value of 0 to 255. And then we're going to print those values to the serial monitor and as I said that's so you can adjust and fine tune the threshold if you find that you have an apple that's a little bit out of uh, tolerance or perhaps you're using a banana or a pear. Now we're going to go and do a bunch of if-elses if and we're going to check the touch switch value and compare it to that threshold and if the value is lower than the threshold then we're going to enable the DAC and output the frequency for that particular switch and so we're going to output a sine wave at that frequency and we go through all of that. At the end of it if we find that nothing's been pressed then we disable the DAC. We put a short delay on it and we do it over and over so it's a pretty simple sketch. Let's load it up and let's go and play our musical fruit. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for the uh, premiere of the DroneBot Workshop Orchestra, starring a number of small Granny Smith apples and a few oranges. Now, uh, I've got the ESP32 over here, the amplifier module here. It's a stereo module, but I'm just using one channel. And the potentiometer that I'm using is here on the board, and that just is a volume control for it. And of course, I've got a speaker back here. And so, without further ado, let's go and see if we can make some music with this fruit. And it works pretty good. You'll notice a couple of times when I pressed it, it went on and off. And that can be fixed by looking in your serial monitor at the different uh, numbers that you're getting and adjusting the threshold accordingly. Because, of course, I've all got mine set to the same number, but you can't expect every apple and every orange to have the same conductance and capacitance qualities to it. But all in all, if you've ever wanted to play an instrument and eat it later, this is the project for you. Well, that about wraps up our look at the ESP32 DAC. I hope that it's opened up your eyes to the fact that the ESP32 has a lot of other features other than just Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It's not just a pretty face. Now, if you want to get the code that I used today, or if you want some more information about the DAC, you'll find all of that in the article that accompanies this video on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website, and there's a link right below the video to that article. There's also a link below the video to sign up for the newsletter, so if you haven't done that please consider doing it it's not a sales letter it's just my way of keeping in touch with you and letting you know what's going on here in the workshop now if you want to discuss the DAC further or if you want to show off your musical fruit examples you can do that on the DroneBot workshop forum it's a great place to discuss electronics with a number of like-minded people and of course you can join the forum for free and finally if you haven't please subscribe to the YouTube channel I make videos about electronics and microcontrollers, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. All you need to do is hit that red subscribe button and also click on that bell notification and assuming you've enabled notifications on YouTube, you'll get notified every time that I make a new video. Now before we go today, I want to leave you with a little bit more musical fruit. So we're going to class it up a little bit. We're going to play a little bit of Mozart with our apples and oranges. So let's take a listen to that, take care of yourself, and I'll see you again very soon here in the DroneBot workshop. Goodbye for now.